visual person, my experience on the internet is so much of it is looking at images, um, but how this transition to using smartphones uh, completely, you know, um, and, um, we can't look at images properly, or will we learn to? We've learned to look at, um, you know, films from the big screen on our, you know, on our small whatever devices, but to <coughs> look at anything on a small screen uh, is not possible. Any kind of imagery to really engage with it to me is still mostly a phone, and just how that in itself completely transforms the way people can absorb information, <coughs> whether it be images or not. It's just this complete shift in the shift in scale, but we get used, we've gotten used to so many other permutations and transformations of the technology perhaps will adjust to minute, minute scale as well. If you take the notion of artists being effective <coughs> at reflecting realities more clearly than that had occurred with most of the rest of us, reflecting the cultural realities around. But if I don't know who we are culturally, the artists will tell us that. Uh, and there are artists all over the world. As, as your opening statement went was that uh, the technologies don't homogenize. We remain, we respond differently depending on who we are culturally and socially. Mm -hmm. My question is, with all this technology, 20th century technology leading to 21st technology, knowing that in a global village, we are enormously culturally diverse. <coughs> are we better aware of our cultures globally now? Do we know who we are better now in 2016 than we did in 1950? Like, uh, has these technologies made us culturally aware? Do we better know who we are in the world now as a result of the technologies? As you would in a village. There's a better for it notion of a village. You know who you are in a village. You not only know who you are in the village, you care about who you are in the village, mm -hmm. because you're committed to it. You have some kind of uh, bond with who you are, culturally. Um, the, I guess my question is, uh, do the technologies enhance and support our awareness and tolerance of and engaging of our cultural diversity worldwide, or not? Do we better know who we are in the world? I say not. <laughs> because we are on the brink of a disaster with global warming and we are moving along as though nothing was demanding our attention. <coughs> there are some crazy people like myself, other scientists, who are trying to warn the world that we're on the brink of a disaster. But we're continuing to have governments subsidize the development of petroleum. The whole infrastructure of our society is geared for the consumption of petroleum. And people are arguing about whether to put a pipeline here or a pipeline there. That's not the question. The question is, should we have stations that recharge batteries? Should we make every gas station a battery charging station? This is a, a how, terrible how, problem. How the fact that cultural, how does this relate to the question though? Do we know each other? Do we know ourselves culturally speaking better now than in the past? Does the technology enhance our? I just grab that in, in, in order to speak of my say. <laughs> 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 because I wanted to mention to everybody on this Thursday, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Pope's encyclical. <laughs> now I'm Jewish. And if you got a Jewish guy promoting the Pope, you know there's a problem. <laughs> so, if you could come on Thursday, the 28th at 4 p.m. to Charbonnel Lounge in St. Michael's campus, I would be very happy to greet you there and give you a Christian hug. <laughs> I should say that if, if a mainstream economist like myself agrees with the Jewish guy who supports the Pope, then there really must be something here. I completely agree that an absolute no-brainer is removing subsidies from fossil fuels. Almost every country indulges in it. It's a low-hanging fruit. There are obviously reasons, if it were that low-hanging, why isn't it? The reasons, but it's the single most sensible thing we could do to make the world a better place. Leave that aside. 
Um, I think, David, on your question, it's difficult to untangle, in my mind, uh, two things. Because you ask, uh, is all this enhanced technology making us more aware of our backgrounds and, and our culture and who we are? And uh, I, I think back to the 60s and 70s and, and, and then here at the 80s and 90s where the ad, you know, video was supposed to kill the radio star and DVDs were supposed to supplant the cinema experience and so on. And what we see each time is each time we think something is going to happen, something else happens. And we thought that with all this globalization stuff, it would be the McDonaldization of the world. In fact, what you find is a proliferation of different kinds of ethnic fast foods, not just one kind. And, and so one should assume that just because you have a common platform, only one thing comes to the top. The reason I say that is that the countries that I visit that I know, I sense that there's more of a sense of heritage. There, there, there are parts of, of Mumbai where I grew up, which were no-go zones, which are now being converted into very funky you know, uh, warehouses in the port area that are being resurrected and so on. <coughs> and some of that surely is because they must have seen that that happens in other parts of it. But my point is, you have to disentangle technology, which brings ideas across the world, with just the fact that this is um, awareness of your culture is sometimes a luxury. And, and it comes with being slightly better off and not having to fend for yourself existentially all the time. And both have been happening simultaneously. On average, countries have become wealthier, which allows you to explore things in, in greater depth. And you have this technology, which makes it easier. And I couldn't tell you which is which, but the fact if, that they feed off each other is surely a good thing. So I'm not terribly worried about which effect <coughs> Could I implicate McLuhan? No, no. I, I do so with a little trepidation since I'm surrounded by McLuhan scholars. But uh, one of the things that I recall him saying was that print tended to homogenize. And I think there's some certainly historical evidence for that. And then he suggested that electronic media tended to tribalize. And that's why I'm suggesting it now, because if, if if we are seeing enhanced tribalism, then I would think we might also see that enhanced awareness of our differences or of our, our various cultures. Um, I've done a little bit of traveling in the last while, and I'm kind of surprised that people actually know what a Canadian is. I think Canadians are getting a little more identity than they once had. Um, they always thought that Canadians were just Americans with a toque, um, or something like that. And, and I think they're starting to say, Nicer Americans. And one, nice comic Americans. one comic said, we're just Americans without guns. And I don't really, I don't really like that, that approach either. But um, I do think that Canada has more of an identity um, that it did internationally. It could be as a result of the electronic cultures, the electronic media effects. But if, it, if there is an effect, it would help me to understand why there is this increased tribalism and this increased awareness of different factions. And I'm also thinking about the caliphate yes. and whether that might be... Absolutely. Absolutely. Finish my thought. No, no, no. <laughs> no I mean, uh, I, I, no, you're, you're doing really well, sorry. No, I could take your slides. I, I mean, I, I totally agree with you that one of the things that McLuhan also said is that just because it's a village is not necessarily a friendly village. So that you become aware of the oh, and, 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 and the and 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 the and <coughs> the meaning of smaller and smaller differences, the emphasis, and to some extent, one interpretation I've seen of the whole uh, rise of the, the the fundamentalists, apart from the environment crisis and so on, is the this threat to the identity and the, the, the this need to assert uh, tribal identity in what is perceived as a, 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 a homo homogenization. But also they are very clever in using the Brexit tool um, in, in, in making making comments. So I, I I'm not sure where you were going, but I think I would I would just put in your your point that it's not all roses and, and, uh, and flowers. Well there's also the mystery as to